Graduates, please be seated. Hi, and welcome to the Valley High School commencement ceremony for the graduating class of 1995. Well guys, we made it. That long awaited day has arrived. The bells of freedom are ringing, and we can now look forward to the greater things in life. Sleep, sleep, and well, sleep. No more incessant reminders from English teachers pestering us about our next essay due date. A recurring nightmare for the infamous calculator gone mad. Some of you may have chosen to continue your education at a college or university. Others of you may be taking on a job that will lead you in the right direction. But I know there's some of you who probably haven't even planned a move. Past dropping it off, jumping into a car, and taking the wildest one-way trip out of there. Well, I've got just two words for those people. Wait up. But realistically, the achievements you have made to get here today cannot be compared to anything else. Everyone sitting here with a cap and gown on right now should be congratulated. Not only for your academic achievements, but for successfully graduating from a social, mental, and physical phase of life. And as the old cliche goes, this is only the beginning. You have so many more experiences to look forward to. For example, in a matter of minutes, you have the chance to sit and listen to hundreds of names being read. Hey, have you ever been so lucky? But remember, everyone deserves their chance to walk across the stage as you do. And besides, we had the stranger things on the side of our heads to amuse us. My fellow Vikings, this graduation symbolizes that life will be a little different from now on. Remember, you'll always be what you've always been, if you always do what you've always done. Don't satisfy yourself with what if and could I. Experience life and be happy with it was and I could. You know, a close family friend of mine, who happens to be king of the jungle, once gave me some valuable advice. Hakuna Matata, he said. It means no worries for the rest of your days. It's amazing how simple two little words are, but yet how meaningful they become. If only we could live today with no fear and hesitation for tomorrow, or guilt and regret for yesterday, then today will be the greatest day we can remember. If you live each moment with life and enthusiasm, then that, my friends, is your own problem-free philosophy. Thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, the National Anthem, and the Alma Mater. Gentlemen, please remove your caps. Now, the National Anthem, sung by Natalie Whiting.
Graduates, family, and friends, please join me in welcoming our dignitaries for this afternoon. Dr. Edward Goldman, Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Steve McCoy, Area Superintendent, Ms. Billy Rayford, Area Superintendent, Mr. Larry Mason, Member of the Board of Trustees, and Ms. Carol Levin, Principal of Valley High School.
nor the chocolates from our red and white gowns. Furthermore, we do not decide to be rebels. It is an honor to be standing here today to share my favorite thoughts and feelings of high school and help me to leave you with this, some advice for the future. To think after three years at Valley, writing a number of essays, speeches, and articles, I have one last speech to write. Yet this is not the end, but the beginning for a number of us, either to continue with our academic career or to pursue other goals. After all, we all have to make the transition and deal with the changes that will occur after this day is over and we receive our diplomas. Well, this day has come, our graduation day. This will be one of the greatest transitions of our lives, going from a pampered student to an independent adult. As I see it, we should not look at this day as a time to reminisce and be melancholy, but a time to rejoice and look ahead. We've all been waiting for today, the day we finally leave high school and enter the real world of college atmosphere. We should be more excited and more nervous about the new classes or new jobs that we'll be undertaking, or the fraternities or sororities that we'll be joining, and the new homes or apartments that we'll have entered out. Now we don't have to deal with the monotonous routine of classes, and we'll be able to decide our own schedules, our own living rules, and so on. We'll be able to start all over with new records, and once again, we'll be freshmen trying to reach new goals. However, we have to remind ourselves that's not going to be all part of the fun, but full of decisions, choices, and consequences. For the most part, we'll later be facing bills and looking for a job. Overall, the future is filled with the good and the bad. Yes, there should be a bit of reminiscing and sadness, because all we've lived with and grown accustomed to will be either remaining or leaving. Some of us will probably be leaving the desert to possibly a different environment, where the college of our choice is located, while others will remain here and attend college here and pursue other goals. In the long run, each and every one of us will be making a tremendous transition. In my case, I've gone through a variety of changes, especially my mom being in the Army. I've had to shift schools often and try to make new friends. However, an important transition that I have undertaken during high school is a shift from pre-AP to international baccalaureate. Now the answer to why I'm wearing blue is that I'm one of the five other seniors who have decided to take the rigorous program of IB. I'd like to take the time to acknowledge my IV cohorts, John Garber, Congo, Mike Priest, and Lars Samansky. From this course, I always remember my after school theory and knowledge of class. I dug for fossils, visited the Natural Museum of History and the Museum, and did many thought-provoking activities. Overall, I thank Ms. Bernice, aka Vampire Advisor, for opening your minds to think about and challenge what we know. Finally, I save the best for last to give my thanks to my family and close friends. Foremost, I'd like to thank my parents for all their support, as well as friendship. To my mom, even though you made a company to the military, you always made time for me. To Ina and Anna, thanks for bearing me when my family was in Germany. Finally, to my sister and close friends, once again, thank you for your help. With the help of people like this, the transition that we make today will hopefully be a smooth and exciting one, and a step to the future. If she were described by her initials, this valedictorian would be smart and exceptional. From personal experience, I know that she is exceptional because she shares her intelligence. She was my geometry tutor. She didn't have to help me. In fact, she volunteered her time. In addition to her outstanding academic performance, she has graced our school with her dance performances and served as president of Dance Bravo. It is with great pleasure I introduce to you, Sarah Edgar. Here we are, the day we've all been waiting for. Today we graduate and enter a new world. As I stand up here, I wonder who will go on to college and who will go on to the workforce. I also wonder who will live their dreams through and whose dreams will be destroyed. No matter where we end up, we will always have our memories. We, have, we will always remember the good times at Valley. We have the memories of our assemblies, our games, and our dances but the greatest memory will be today's. But we also have memories that we'd like to forget. I'm sure the stresses from the last few months have been enough to live the rest of our lives. Getting ready for college, prom, work, and worst of all, final exams. But unfortunately, we will never live a stress-free life. I found this poem a while ago and thought of the changes that have occurred and those that will. It is titled Changes. 
by Maria Angela. Fickle comfort steals away. What it knows, it will not say. What it can, it will not do. It flies from me to you or you. Capricious peace will not bind the severed nerve, the jagged mind, the shattered dream, the loveless sleep. It frolics now within your keeps. Confidence that Papa J is planning now to slip away. Look fast, it's fading rapidly. Tomorrow it will return again. Although this poem paints a cynical picture of change, we can only hope that change will bring us a better and bigger life. Having finished a long journey where we have encountered many hardships, but have had a fun time with the same, the future will be easier. For now, we have the knowledge, experience, and courage to go on. We can thank several people for this. First, we can thank all of our teachers and administrators for giving us the knowledge that we will be helpful in our new lives. We can thank God, our friends, and ourselves for the experiences we have gone through although many times these experiences were not fun and unwanted. Finally, we can thank our family, who has many times given us the courage we so need. I'd like to end with a quote by John Fitzgerald Kennedy. It is time for a new generation of leadership to cope with new problems and new opportunities, for there is a new world to be won. of introducing our next valedictorian, I got a headache. How do I sum up Neil in 30 seconds when our friendship spans over seven years? The beginning was rocky. We had to do a report on a foreign country. Of course, we both wanted India. Guess who won? First impressions aside, I've come to respect, admire, and love the group. Respect because of his strong determination in all tasks, big or small. Admiration for his constant ability to reach and surpass his high goals. And love because of his dedication to others, his enthusiasm, and his undying friendship. Hundreds have passed through the halls of Valley in the past 30 years, and hundreds more will come and go, but none will ever compare it to Neil. It is now my great honor and privilege to present to you Neil Gupta. With a tear of frustration rolling from my eye, I looked up to my first grade teacher, Mrs. Livingston, furious because she wouldn't give me a goldfish cracker just because I couldn't pronounce the word correctly. Or how in Mr. Welding's eighth grade AT class, everyone made fun of my ugly black shoes for the movie scene. Or in physics, how the right hand rule, in some strange and demented way, worked on my left hand. And why the infamous theme of alienation in English class couldn't just relate Voskalnikov to weird people from Mars. Yes, the memories of school keep living, each one with its own special significance and indi individualism. They become a part of me and build from that single cold tear that rolled down my cheek in the first grade. School is life, not a prelude to life. That's probably the best quote I've ever heard. We've been so trained to think that everything we've done in high school will prepare us for the real world. Yet through all of the laughter, tears, hardships, and successes, the thing about life that we hardly realized is that we were living it. Our experiences in high school have helped us to grow spiritually and culturally and provided for us strong, diversified characters that will carry us through in life. So what happens next? Picture yourself stranded in a narrow, empty hallway with unlimited doors surrounding you. It may seem like there's no obstacle in your way preventing you from getting where you want to go. But the only pressure you feel is choosing which door to open. After leaving here today, you will find so many opportunities that come your way. Some will be good, some will be bad, some will be completely mysterious. But nonetheless, they are, they are challenges that we will need to be prepared to meet. Are we? Of course not. But that's not a reason to be fearful for the future. In fact, it's a reason to look forward to it. There is a purpose for every experience. And remember to share it with the loved ones around you. Mom and Dad, thank you for your guidance and support and for always granting me the independence to open the doors I choose. I love you. Nigel, you've always been behind me, big brother. And no matter what door I open, you're always there to help me through whatever's on the other side of it. Nina, you've always been directly watched over me, no 
And whether you know it or not, the pathway of doors I've taken in high school, I've learned from following you. Thank you. Mew. Wow. <laughs> Twin sister, since we met in Warm Stomach, we've been together, opening doors to successes and failures. And for the first time in almost 18 years, we've been going our separate ways. But no matter how far apart we are, you'll never be more than far away. And for you, the class of 1995, remember, happiness is what you make of it. It's not an emotion, it's a choice. If the door you open leads you to another empty hallway or a giant brick wall, then let your own strength, persistence, and optimism smash that brick wall into oblivion. And then any barriers that separated you from success will merely become a memory, like Mrs. Livingston and her goldfish crackers. Be careful tonight, and I'll see you in the year 2005. Thank you. He can be seen at conservative pep rallies where he always sits on the right. He can be seen in his calculus class dreaming of last night's Rush Limbaugh program. In the fall, he can be seen in his bright orange hunting vest, rifle in hand. Rumor has it he was even seen in Washington, D.C., dancing among the crowd of screaming women. He can be seen punching the victory in a karate tournament with the skills he acquired as a first-degree black belt. In June, he will be seen attending the United States Air Force Academy. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce the man who in the future can be seen as the President of the United States, Wayne Joseph Murbeck. You will remember this day. Not only because you're graduating from high school and you're watching your child do so, you will remember during the valedictorian speech of this nation's future president. No, not Neil. It's been a long-running gag in our fifth-hour government class with Mr. Powell. Some people address me as Mr. President when they sign my yearbook. I guess it all started when senior personalities were chosen, being a little miffed with the particular category. My retort became, yeah, when I become president, then we'll see who's most likely to succeed. Even though Gary told me long ago to hang it up, and even though all the liberals said they'd never vote for me, I still have a strong desire to hold political power. <clears throat> my political interest began my sophomore year when I began listening to Rush Limbaugh, so I guess it's safe to say that my views tilt to the right. And even though those aforementioned liberal students and teachers almost never agree with anything I say, I hold them in high regard for their strong convictions. When this generation becomes politically motivated, everything else will fall in line. When you take a stand on social issues, you realize that you now have to practice what you preach and live up to the standards that you've set for everyone else. For example, being conservative, I felt like a total hypocrite when I was washing at that Offspring concert. I have faith in this generation, from attending close-up and sunny form, we will not allow our elders to lead us around like dogs on a leash. Many of our nation's youths are aware of the issues which affect us every day. The more of you who take the initiative, who seek out the truth, who form an educated opinion, the more informed and capable of influence we all will be. For not only are small groups of motivated people able to affect drastic change, indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Thank you. She jumps into her oversized clothes and rushes off to school. She begins her day revealing her talent with the beautiful sounds of the viola, then continues it challenging the views of literature. She is always willing to lend a helping hand in student council, making sure that everything gets done without a complaint. From 1 to 2 o'clock after school, you can count on seeing her creatively working with fellow students on a project beneficial to either the school or community. From 2 to 5, she works hard being a great team leader and player, whether it be in basketball, volleyball, or softball. This is a friend who, amazingly enough, completes her day with huge success and always a bright smile on her face. It is my pleasure to introduce to you, Leanne Ong.
Being a member of the first freshman class to walk up the Valley High School ramp in almost two decades, I've seen many changes. Maybe only a handful of you were here when we, the dreaded ninth graders, were initiated back into high school life, but all of you have seen tremendous differences occur at Valley. Our staff has been restocked with new faces, our walls have been painted, our portables have burnt down, and even our lunch has been altered. I watched them participate in the destruction and restoration of traditions and have seen new traditions begin to form. And I can say that high school has taught me two lessons. One, that change is necessary. And two, always bring your backpack with you into the school bathroom to keep the door closed. I will remember high school as a place where I began to come out of my shell and discover just who I really am. I'm very proud to be graduating from Valley. The variety of faces truly resembles the American melting pot. I see it as a school that has a student from all kinds of homes with all kinds of needs and desires. Through playing basketball, volleyball, and softball at Valley, I learned unity and control as well as meeting some amazing people. And it never bothered me that my teams never won a state championship because, well, truthfully, I wouldn't have made the team if they had. So, my mother once told me that no matter how good you are at something, someone will always be better than you. But no matter how bad you are at something, someone will always be worse. High school has taught me this lesson and forced me to believe in this philosophy. I stand here, supposedly at the top of my class, but I've seen many of you surpass me academically as well as extracurricularly. Valley has seen many different kinds of students run through its halls, with every error changing the average student's face. But this reality of humility and confidence has always surfaced. Now that we are getting ready to face more of the world with less restraints, I wonder how harsh this reality will become for each person. The center of our lives for the past four years has left us, and graduation coaxes us to move on. I will miss Valley, the dances, the assemblies, the sporting events, the kids running me over in the hall, the juniors parking my senior parking space, and even the hall monitors yelling at me to get to class. But I'll miss the people the most. My friends and teachers have been the focus in my life, while my parents, and especially my brother, have been my support. Mom, Dad, and Doug, I love you. The students and the faculty create the vision of Valley High School for me, and it will never be the same. Every year our school changes with the passing of the seniors to the entrance of the underclassmen. And now it is our turn to pass on the supreme name of the seniors to the class of 96. Our memories will be immortal in the halls of Valley High School. My friend Lance supplied me with this quote to leave you with. The key to our immortality is first living a life worth remembering by Bruce Lee. And now for our senior song, Sweetest Days, by Cheryl Jolo, accompanied by <laughs> choir director Greg Lambert. I'd like to dedicate this song to the class of 1995, and I love you all, and Mom, wherever you are, this is for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
dear fellow ranchers, so many thoughts linger in my mind at this very moment. There are so many things that could be said. Like the applause of our loved ones will undoubtedly make us feel invincible as you set foot on the stage. And our diploma, that one single inanimate object, will surely give us an indescribable sense of accomplishment as we hold it in our hands. However, despite these various feelings, a single thought prevails. We, the Valley High School Class of 95, have triumphed. We have conquered all the hindrances that lurked in our paths. As Herbert Spencer once said, education has for its object the formation of character. The education we have obtained through our years here at Valley High School enabled us to form our sense of character and individuality. Diversified as we all are, the guidance bestowed upon us by our administrators, educators, families, and friends unifies us, for we all share a single common quality, the strength that lies within. As we leave this auditorium today, our hearts will be filled with pride, sadness, and uncertainty. Pride, for we have come this far. Sadness, for we will be closing a door to a life we have grown to cherish. And uncertainty, for we are about to open a door to a life unknown to us. Our years here at Valley High School have come to an end, and the time to bid farewell is here. But later, as we walk into the world that awaits us, be mindful that our voyage has just begun. We shall reminisce on the past and not be regretful for the sweet days are over. Instead, anxiously wait for what the future holds for us, but never fail to keep the memories close to our hearts. My fellow graduates, as we close this chapter in our book of life, I leave you with one last thought by Richard Bach. Don't be dismayed at goodbyes. A farewell is necessary before we can meet again. And meeting again, after a moment or a lifetime, is certain for those who are friends, for those bonded with the spirit of togetherness of the Valley High School, Class of 95. Good afternoon. Today, I have the honor and pleasure of introducing the leader of our pack, Mrs. Kara Levitt. As principal of Valley, Mrs. Levitt has shown her dedication and commitment to her job through her curriculum modifications, unique school schedule, mentoring program, and her overall interest in the students. Because of student council and cheerleading, I have had many opportunities to work closely with Mrs. Levitt. Through many struggles and victories, she has helped me to understand the meaning of Thomas Jefferson's famous quote, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. With the knowledge others and myself have gained, we thank you, Mrs. Levitt, for filling Valley with pride. Presenting Valley High School's principal, Mrs. Carol Levitt. There's not a finer group of seniors to address than the graduating class of Valley High School. High school graduation is something special. It's your graduation, it's an end, it's a beginning, it's a time to celebrate your accomplishments and your achievements. You and the class have met our expectations and you're ready for what lies ahead. Your education to this point builds the foundation for what we hope will be a successful future and a successful life for you. You have gained the knowledge necessary to tackle those challenges that lie out there waiting for you. Your academic achievements, your leadership, your influence and positive attitude have been so important in maintaining the traditions of excellence that are inherent at Valley High School. Let's just review the year for a few brief seconds. You have five National Merit finalists. You have five International Baccalaureate Diploma candidates. You have five valedictorians. And they are not the same five in all those three groups. You have an award-winning key club. You have journalism awards. You have math contest awards. You have national Latin exam medalists. You have the only French language diploma winner in the state. You provided us with a new look in band, in theater, and in choir. You have a football team that was successful for the first time in about at least four years. 
You have a basketball team that qualified for the zone playoffs. You have a state championship in girls track. You also are the leaders of a school that likes each other, where the student body is united, where they share in the ups and the downs of the year. For all of these things, we thank you. You're the leaders there, and we will miss you. And now as you begin your new venture, we want to wish you the best of everything that the future could offer you. And most of all, we want you to always believe in yourself. Thank you. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce or reintroduce to you Mr. Larry Mason, a member of the Clark County Board of School Trustees. I'd like you to come forward now to receive the class. As the principal of Valley High School, it is my pleasure to present to you the graduating class of 1995. have completed the credit requirements prescribed by the Board of Trustees of the Clark County School District and the Nevada Department of Education. These students will receive the award commensurate with their academic accomplishments under the laws of the state of Nevada. Congratulations. Thank you, Carol. <clears throat> I'm very honored and humbled to be here amongst uh, a wealth of talent and knowledge. I would first like to thank Carol, her staff, for allowing me this, this privilege to talk to you. When she first asked me to do this, I said, well, what should I say? Well, maybe about 30 or 40 minutes. I didn't think so. I said to myself, maybe I should write a long speech. I didn't do that either. Um, I'm a very empathetic type of person, and I'm gonna speak from my heart and soul. I'm happy for the fact that you are gonna be the future of tomorrow. You've already laid out your plans, some of you, some have not. There's some other people who are graduating here today that I'd like you to recognize. And if you could please stand and recognize your parents, your friends, your relatives that helped you go through these four years. Give them a round of applause. The road that you have ahead, ahead of you is, is, is a long one but it's gonna be a wonderful one. You'll be back for your five-year reunion, your 10-year reunion, your 15-year reunion, your 20, your 25. I just went back for my 30th. It's wonderful. They once asked me, well, I asked the other day, what can I say to this group? Well, you can say anything you want, Mr. Mason. Anything, anything. You're a trustee. Parts of wisdom, words of wisdom I thought of? No. I challenge you. I challenge you to make this country, this state, this city, your community, your school, a better place for your sisters, your brothers, your nieces, your nephews, your friends to go to school. I challenge you to make life for yourself a better life. I challenge you to make your parents, your friends, your relatives better persons. I challenge you to love each other as fellow men and women and allow yourselves to grow and to enjoy life as it should be. You're a wonderful group of young men and women that I see out there and you're the future of Valley High, you're a future of Las Vegas, you're a future of Nevada, and you're a future of the, of the United States. Go forth, peace, and joy.
Neil Gupta. Clarissa D. Loretta Comer. Wayne Joseph Burbach. Gary Lynn Chambers. John James Dorber III. Rita D. Dominguez. Con B. Go. Sarah M. Editor. Michael Glenn Priest. Leanne Palmer. Owen W. Carithers. Laura A. Slansky. Bradley L. Bullock. Jody L. O'Brien. Randy S. Carlson. Connie Marie Jensen Mahoney. Doroteo F. Lajeras. Christine Rusolto Asma. Lance Jones. April Marie Klein. Osan Kwan. Julia Ann Cox. Adam P. Leonard. Amanda J. Peterson. Christopher P. Murray. Shweta Batnagar. Thomas J. Perpar. Niru Gupta. Maurice D. Pike. Rachel L. Skolnick. Emma E. Terrell. Vanessa A. Cruz. Romero A. Castro. 
Maisha M. Mons. John P. Searle. Teresa M. Beale. Julio C. Chavez. Lori J. Berardi. Vikram D. Chohan. Lizette Bermudez. Eric P. Christensen. Cindy Ernie. Eric D. Clark. Rebecca Bryce Bixler. J. F. Collins. Aaron A. O'Keefe. Tyneen D. Costin. Nicole M. Brands. Vincent R. DeGaetano. Tricia M. Burns. Christos A. Dimitros. Sarah E. Butler. Matthew B. DeWitt. Christina Hennings. Shane D. Durrett. Gabriella Hennings. Gennaro A. Espinoza. Francia Aricelli Arno. Glenn Wayne Elliott. Angela Chitney. James D. Finch. Holly L. Clark. Corey A. Glover. Tiffany I. Cochran. Rodrigo Bagora. Catherine T. Coleman. Lawrence J. Gradle, Jr. April C. Cook. Anthony Green. Carolyn D. Cooper. Michael D. Green. Jamie L. Crawford. Alan Lawrence Prospect. Catherine A. Curtin. Daniel W. Grimmer. Cynthia M. Davis. Norbert Giorfi. Heather L. Davis. Mark Woody Haddad. Lisa Marie Davis. Daniel H. Hegos. Aide de la Torre. Mark E. Hairgrove. Nicole E. Giorgio. Anthony B. Halili. Leslie A. Evelyn. Stephen R. Harris. Jessica L. Elias. Jeffrey E. Hernandez. Sarah P. Escandere. Sung Dai Han. Rebecca A. Fair. John R. Howell. Barbara E. Fairbanks. Herman Hudson. Nicole A. Faulkner. Derek Pulse. J.C. M. Fernandez. Josu Ibargo. Corey E. Fortson. Brandon R. Jackson. Laura A. Fraga. Daniel C. Jackson. Julie M. Gaines. Philip D. Jackson. Ernestina Galindo. Yurik R. Jackson. Dora A. Garcia. Cameron Jensen. Cynthia Gates. Lupe Jimenez. Dina Gianniosis. Jack T. Johnson. Nicole M. Gillia. Adam E. Josephs. Mona Forster Gomez. Ramon S. Cavalli. Anilio D. Gonzalez. Trevor H. Caston. Tori L. Green. Chad W. Casey. Grace A. Umalami. David C. Keith. Laura E. Han. Jeremy F. Keller. Tannen Sheehan Tyra Hayes. Johnny Y. Kincaid. Sue H. King. Stephen D. 
John C. Rupp. Amanda R. Palmer. Joseph D. Sanchez. Lisa Jane Payne. Zabdiel Sanchez. Julie D. Payne. Alan Q. Santiago. Gina M. Pichirelli. Chevera A. Savage. Pearl C. Kenny. Robert J. Swenser. Darlene M. Poindexter. Daniel A. Sicolo. Monica D. Versailles. Jonathan J. Stevens. Pamela S. Friend. Stephen T. Stewart. Jennifer P. Reyes. Chad J. Tumlo. Stella Ramosa. Darian J. Turner. Celeste Rizzo. Carl F. Ewan. Christina D. Roberts. Andrew J. Esther. Alejandra Rodriguez. Jose O. Valley. Tamara J. Rowe. Hector A. Verano. Shauna Nicole Ross. Jose A. Villasenor. Carmen L. Rubino. Benjamin L. Watrous. Sabrina A. Safford. Nicholas L. Webb. Marie A. Schutz. Zachary B. Wiener. Linda M. Sim. John P. White. Carolyn R. Simons. Patrick E. Whiteley. Patricia Ann Sison. Miles K. Williams. Natalie H. Slaver. Christopher T. Williams. Edna C. Solano. James Lee Williams, Jr. Judy Solis. Scott J. Williams. Chiquela N. St. Mary. Alfonso Wilson. Annie L. Sterling. Robert L. Wilson. Erica D. Stripling. Mike J. Wong. Chan L. Tan. Eugene R. Yanga. Lorraine A. Taylor. Sean Yu. Elizabeth R. Tormino. Patricia D. Turner. Eileen M. Warner. Jamie Marie Welding. Julie A. Warner. Chanda Derese Wilson. Natalie Ann Weiser. Amelia U. Hines. Jody C. Yap. Karen Zitun. Beth Atasso.
assemblies, football games, and important stuff like gossip? This is it, girl. Are you for real? Look around you, Vanessa. Why do you think there are hundreds of people staring at you at this very instant? Hmm, I guess it is true. Yes, it's time. It's time to say goodbye to our high school, our teachers, our friends, and our way of life for all these years. Oh, stop and cry! Don't worry, Vanessa. We'll always have the memories. Will the graduates please stand for the time?